Our next guest is a Tesla shareholder, was among the first to voice concerns about Musk's split company focus. Joining us today, future fund managing partner, Gary Black. Gary, it's good to have you back. Um, is this is Hi. this really material? I mean, do we really believe he's got a, a, an amount of time spent on Twitter that can now go back to cars? There are a few things that th this is a great fit. And I know Linda Yaccarino well, I've spent a lot of time with her. Um, she's the perfect, perfect candidate for the job because she's an ad exec. She can talk the language of ROI and brand safety with other advertisers. And it stops all the silly talk about Elon's going to bring a technician in to run Twitter. You need an ad exec to bring the advertisers back. That's good for Tesla because people worry that Elon's going to have to put more money into, into Twitter. So I like it for a few reasons. One, um, there are a lot of institutional PMs who aren't going to invest in a company where the CEO is split between one or more companies. And you can't look at SpaceX and Boring and Neuralink as, um, you know, other other interests because he built those from scratch. He put the management team in. Twitter's a total redo. It's a total reinvention. So it's a lot of work. And the fact that you're going to have somebody else who actually does the work, that's really important. Um, the second thing is a lot of people, uh, including myself, are looking at this as it signals that Twitter must be doing pretty well for Elon to step away. Um, because, you know, he'd be more focused on it. He's very focused on it. But the fact that he's willing to let it be and let somebody else drive it is an important signal. And the third thing I think is important is Elon has talked about making Tesla as big as Apple, which is, you know, two and a half trillion dollars. To do that, it can't just rely on the product alone. I think Linda, given her, she's outspoken, but she's deferential. She will be alone among the Elon lieutenants and being able to talk about the benefits of advertising and I view advertising as kind of the next leg for Tesla. Tesla has to be able to convince people that EV adoption you know, should accelerate. They, they have to convince the non-EV users to go with EVs. And so when you're talking about operating costs being lower and how easy it is to, to charge instead of going to a gas station and that it's good for the planet, she's the perfect person to help Elon understand how advertising could be useful to somebody like Tesla. Um, you know, uh, Gary, Elon has said, of course, that um, it was it was in the danger zone when he acquired uh, Twitter, particularly given the interest costs that he has. And it's certainly out of that now, may even be profitable or certainly back to break even, to your point. But he also has indicated via the tweet, and that's all we have right now, that he's still going to maintain a number of different roles at the company. So, you know, I'm just curious as to whether you you really think he's going to pull back in a significant way, given he's still going to be, what, CTO? He's still going to yeah. oversee product, software, and, you know, uh, system operations. They're a perfect match, though. Again, knowing uh, Linda very well, she will bring the advertising marketing expertise that, quite frankly, Elon you know, he's a great marketer, but he doesn't have that ad experience. So she can bring that to the table. And, and you're right. Elon's never going to just walk away from Twitter. It's his baby. It's his love. But I think the two of them will complement each other very well. And it's really important as you think about 2024, you got the Olympics and you got the election coming. Those are huge events for advertisers. And this is a perfect time to be bringing somebody in to get the advertisers back on board Twitter. And she knows them. She knows the language. Um, she understands ROI. She understands the whole concept of brand safety. And they will listen to her because she's very respected in the industry. But so you're the you're a Tesla shareholder, though, right? So how much is this worth for Tesla shareholders? So there's two things going on with Tesla. One is this, that Elon's going to focus a lot more of his time on Tesla. And it's not that he doesn't focus on it, but institutional PMs like myself like that a CEO spends 24-7, 100% of their time focused on the investment that they're putting their money in. And this brings us back closer to that. So I think that's that's a that's a huge positive. Second, as I mentioned, I do think it helps um, think about how does how does Tesla grow from here? Model Y is going to be the best selling car car in the world this year, not EV. It's going to be the best selling car in the world. How do you continue to get EV adoption to soar? Last year EV adoption was 10%, which means 90% were not buying EVs. And so for, for Tesla to grow as it launches the Cybertruck into the pickup segment, which is going to grow its TAM, as it brings out a what we'll call a, a mass market car, we'll call it the $25,000 compact car, how do, you, how do you get people to buy that and try EVs? There are so many people out there who can afford an EV, but they don't do it because they're afraid. They're afraid they're going to run out of battery power. And so you need some sort of education campaign for the non-EV users so that they're willing to buy an EV for the first time. 
And I think somebody like Linda Yaccarino, who, again, she's outspoken, but she's very deferential. She can teach Elon's team at Tesla about advertising and the benefits of Tesla. You know, she's running Twitter, but let's be let's let's face it. All of Elon's companies tend to all work with each other. And I think she's going to be a great value add to the executive team, Elon's yeah. executive team.